Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And something weird has happened. Common sense has descended into British policing. The Royal College of Policing has told officers up and down the country that being offensive is not a crime. Being offended is a privilege and a right and a freedom. So what's happened? Well, up until now, should anyone like I, for example, have said something that someone else found offensive, they could call a policeman who'd pay me a visit. He'd record it as a non-crime hate incident and tell me to check my thinking in a kind of Orwellian dystopian way. Right think, right speech, that kind of thing. You see, the police can't actually catch criminals because they're spending most of their time checking up on Facebook and Twitter in case someone uses the wrong pronoun or calls someone a name. Meanwhile, M's are up, R's are up, burglaries are up, robberies are up, street crime is up. But hey, you do 31 miles an hour or call a man she, Mr Plod will be straight there because he's got nothing else to do except sit on his fat ass and eat donuts. And now they've been told off for it. So let's have a look at the article and see if it makes the slightest bit of uh, d difference to anything that's going to go on in this country. Spoiler, it probably won't. Anyway, here's the article. So, is it a free speech win? UK police told that being offensive is not a crime. Well, of course it's not a crime because anyone could be offensive simply if someone is offended. But you could be offended at the angle of someone's jaunty hat. You could be offended by their haircut. You could be offended by the colour of their jumper. Offence is such a bland term. So how do you be offensive? Offence being offensive is not a crime. Anyway, British police officers have been advised to focus on actual crimes, you know, doing their real job, rather than people being supposedly offensive during debates on Twitter. In new guidance issued by the College of Policing, officers have been told to devote, devote their time towards cutting crime, you know, the thing that they're actually paid to do. Uh, as R's, SA's and VC's, you understand why I have to use initials rather than say the words, YouTube doesn't like it, uh, and these have hit record highs. Instead of policing non-crime hate incidents, which although not actual criminal offences, can still turn up on criminal background check done by prospective employers. That is to say, I could call someone a moron today, he could take offence, I'll have a visit by, you know, the secret Gestapo police. They could record it as a non-crime incident, but it goes on my record and in three years time a prospective employer will say, oh no, you call someone a moron and it's on your record, you're not getting the job. That is insidious and it is wrong and it is Orwellian. They are policing thought and speech because the left-wing wokerati don't like it. Uh, they don't like free speech, this is for sure. Uh, over the past five years, some 120,000 non-crime hate incidents have been logged by the police. That's 120,000 times a policeman has been taken away from doing his actual job to dick around because somebody called someone else a name on Twitter or misgendered them on Twitter or said something that someone else just didn't quite like a little bit. What a waste of time and money and what terrible little snowflakes they are that they have to call the police the spineless cretins. Uh, however, late last year, former police officer Harry Miller won a case against the practice, with the appeal court judges agreeing that making a record of his non-crime breached his human rights. And that is the main thing. You have the human right to cause offence. Miller had previously been investigated for supposedly transphobic posts on Twitter, such as stating that trans women are not real women. That's not a joke. I mean, that is a thing. Because here's the thing. Look, trans women are men. They have male DNA. They're born men. They will live as men. They will die as men. In a hundred years' time, an archaeologist will dig up their body, look at the bones and go, that's a man. Because trans women are men. Are you offended by that? If you're one of the people who's offended by that, good. Because it's my view and I'm free to express my view. 
if you're offended by that, that's fine. I'm being offensive. I'm exercising my right. You have the right to start your channel up and say that people who pretend to be women are women. That's fine. That's your right. It'll offend me, but I'm not going to run to a policeman because I'm not a wanker. Anyway, though police had determined that no crime had been committed by Miller, it was still logged as a non-crime hate incident and Miller was told by police to check his thinking, i.e. how dare you have an original independent thought that doesn't go along with the perceived agenda of a mental minority. Following the court ruling in favour of Miller, Home Secretary Preeti Patel acknowledged that some current practices are having a dangerous impact on free speech and potentially stopping people expressing their views. But this has not yet followed through on promises that she would resolve the issue. Of course not, because Preeti Patel has done nothing. Everything she says she's going to do has turned to dust. She has achieved precisely nothing in her entire career. She has failed upwards every time. And now she's out and hopefully the gig's up and she can slope off back to whatever it is that she does before because she is bloody useless as a politician. And I hope she listens to this and I hope she finds that offensive. But at least she is willing to defend my right to be offensive. Anyway, getting back. The new College of Policing guidance informs officers not to just take the perceived offence perceived, being the operative word there, of one party as justification to record a non-crime hate incident, crucially requiring there be some evidence as to intent to be hostile before an incident can be recorded in the least intrusive way possible. But I have the right also to be hostile. I don't have the right to to hit, to you know, to perform any kind of physicality on someone. But words can be hostile. I can reject an argument in a, in a very strong manner that could be perceived as hostile, but still no crime is being used. And so they're actually now changing, oh, perceived insult and offence into hostility. One can be hostile, again, as I say, I can be very hostile without causing a crime. I'm hostile to ideas. I'm hostile in my, in my robust defence. But they're dicking around with words again because what they want to do is control the narrative and control the agenda by the use of the terminology of what they then can use against you for uttering what you consider to be free speech. That's no longer offensive, but it is hostile and that's a crime. No, it's not. But they've got to keep control. They've got to keep that control because it's important to them. Because the one thing authority absolutely despises is free speech and opinion so we have to make sure that we maintain our free speech and that we maintain our opinion and anyone who tries to stop you well they're offensive aren't they report them anyway we'll carry on it just goes on about the same thing and it's uh, it's there but the point being free speech should be absolute obviously you don't shout fire in a theater that's stupidity but the right to have an opinion and the right to express an opinion must be sacrosanct and no way should anyone come knocking at your door tell you to check your thinking and then record it so that later you might not get a job because of your opinions anyway i shall round off here and come up of course what the police have been told and what the police will actually do are two entirely different things they have been told on many many occasions that the general public filming them on their phones for example is not a crime and yet they really don't like it and keep asking people to turn them off but never do if ever you're in a situation keep that phone recording it might be the only thing that saves you i don't trust the police either they're not your friends anyway if you like what you hear and see on the channel please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already ring the bell for notifications of future output leave a like leave a comment and until next time Stay safe, stay well, fight for free speech, and goodbye.